Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, René Krijveld. I am a Dutch web developer. I work and I live in the Netherlands. And besides my web work, I love playing drums, making music, reading movies, um, and do training with my hunting dog, Mila, which is a Bracco Italiano. And for those of you who don't know what a Bracco Italiano is, this is a Bracco Italiano. Now, about the Bracco Italiano breed, no, hang on. Let's, go, let's move to form to content. Form to content is a uh, content construction kit uh, which allows you to use uh, many field types. And uh, the, the basic idea is that you do data collection through data entry forms, and then you store the collected data with a predefined layout into a Joomla article. And you can alter the, da the data later, and then the Joomla article is automatically refreshed. So the result is you get very structured and consistent Joomla articles without HTML knowledge for the editor. Um, form to content works with content types and they define the type of content that you want to create. Uh, it contains the default settings for the article that you will generate, like the title, the, the category that the article goes to, the metadata, etc. Uh, and you define the fields which you need in your content type. And example content types are a blog post or a news article, an event description or a car or a client profile. There are many field types available and form to content comes in two flavors, a free version and a pro version. Um, the bold fields are the ones that are available in the pro version as a plus to the free version. Uh, checkbox fields, database lookups, when you can define an SQL statement which collects data from one of your database tables a date picker display list, an email field, which does email validations, file uploads, a geocoder field, which allows you to pick a location on a map and then you get the latitude and longitude coordinates back, hyperlinks, iframes, images, an image gallery, which is a really handy thing, some info text, multi-select boxes, uh, the normal what you see is what you get editor, uh, a text area field, a normal text field and select lists. So there are quite some fields types available. Form to content works with templates and there are three kinds of templates. The template that create the article intro text, there is a template that creates the article main text and you can use templates to define your forms. And the template, uh, you build these uh, in Smarty combined with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So that's what you do as a developer. Your content editor doesn't need to be bothered with this. And Smarty is a, is a template engine for PHP. You can use if-then-else statements uh, for each loops. You can even include PHP inside the template. You have date-time functions. You can use variables. There's a lot of documentation available on uh, Smarty.net, uh, which gives you a full comprehensive list of what you can do with Smarty. Uh, form to content can be, uh, is available through the website formtocontent.com. Like I said, there are two versions, a light and a pro version. Um, the pro version has some extra options um, and the pricing is 35 euros for six months and 50 euros for 12 months. I don't own form to content I'm just a, a user of form to content. Uh, on the website there's a, a big comparison chart between the, the light and the pro versions. You can see what the core fields are, what front end differences there are. Just check on the website so you can see in detail all the differences between the free and the, the paid version. There is a coupon code available for those visiting JM Beyond. So if you, if, if you would consider buying the free version, you can use this coupon code. It will give you a 25% discount valid uh, for six to six weeks until after this event. So you can at least have some discount if you, if you really consider using From the Content Pro. Now about our car sales website. Um, I want to describe every car within one single article. And I want to store these articles in either the for sale category or the sold category. So I can display on the website cars that are for sale and cars that I have sold. And the main properties that I want to uh, register for every car is the brand, the type, the registration ID, the transmission, fuel, the year, the mileage, the price, a description, and some pictures. And I want to do all front end content management with form to content. Um, I've set up a few demo sites and I've only installed three additional extensions, a Kiva backup to at least get a proper backup of my website, JC as the front-end editor, and I've included uh, the no number models plugin to show some nice lightbox 
uh, pop-ups for the images. So the rest is all core Joomla with form to content added to it. Um, I've done a category setup. Um, I've created the category cars and below that a, a subcategory for sale and the subcategory sold. So a really simple basic setup. Um, and I've also created a content type called car. And let me show you in detail how I've set this up. I'm now in form to content and here are my content types. So if I open up the car content type, then you can see how I've defined the basic setup of this content type. Um, you can define the form to content settings. You can define the Joomla advanced article parameters, images and links, metadata information, and content type permissions. These are just plain Joomla settings. The main settings are the form to content settings. Well, I don't need to show the ID in the front end. I want to show the title. Uh, I want to show the, the alias as well. No need for metadata and meta keywords at this moment. Um, for the category setup, I want to move the articles either in the sold or in the for sale category. So I've set the default category as cars. And then the behavior that I've set up is the user can select a category below the default category. So the user can automatically se select for sale or sold. The author, author alias, and the access level don't need these on the front end. Um, if you save a content type for the first time, form to content generates a default template for the intro text and the main text. We'll come back to that later. Um, I don't need the dates. I don't need the publishing dates. Um, the published field, I'll hide this for now in the front end, but a default value, I set this to yes, which means every time an article is saved, it's automatically published. Um, I don't need to show if it's a featured article or not. Language settings not needed. CAPTCHA is not needed. Uh, I do want to create a Joomla article. Um, for the form, I haven't used a template. I'll use the basic form that form to content generates for me. That's, that's sufficient for now. And tags, I don't use them either. But you can also use these settings whether you want that or not. It's, it's really very flexible to, to set these up. So for the fields, uh, then I added the fields for the content type. Uh, the brand of the car is simply a text field. The type of the car is a text field. For transmission and fuel and year, I've created single select lists. So it will show to the user a simple select list of the options. Mileage is a text field. The price is a text field. Description is a multi-line editor, so a WYSIWYG editor on the front end. And for the images, I've set up the field as, a, as an image gallery. Uh, this is how the fields look in the back end. Let me show you how that looks in from the content. These are the fields. For simple, for example, the brand field, it's a simple text field. The field name is brand. The caption is brand with a capital B, which it shows a bit better. Uh, it's a single select, single line text box. Uh, it's a required field, so you can set it to be required or not. Uh, you can even specify a specific error message when the user forgets to fill the field. You can set additional settings like the size, the max length, uh, extra attributes. You can also set up HTML5 input types, which is really handy. Uh, and you can even do some validations with uh, some reg regex, regex patterns, both in JavaScript and PHP. The fields for, uh, for the single select list, for example, the fuel, I've defined that as a single select list. And here are the options that I want to present to the user. For example, uh, uh, gasoline, gasoline hybrid, diesel, electric. You can simply add options by creating a, an empty list, or you can move the, the order the way it's presented to the user. So it's really easy to set up a single select list I did like that. I want to display these as a drop-down list, and I've also included an empty choice text, which gives me uh, the option to enter a text for that, which is choose. You'll see it on the front end. A bit of a, a different field is the image gallery field. And the image gallery field, I've defined here the sizes of the images that I want to store in the file system and also the size of the thumbnail. The great thing about this is that the user can upload an image of, for example, 5,000 by 4,000 pixels from the content, automatically resizes the picture and stores it in the, the Joomla images folder, which, which is great because the user cannot make a mistake by uploading a too large image from the content, automatically resizes it. And it also creates a thumbnail for me, which I can use to display in the front end. 
You can set if you want uh, the image to be cropped. Uh, you can set crop thumbnail only. Um, and the image selection, I've created that as an upload field, so I can upload images. But you could also choose to browse the server if you want to use images that are stored on the server. So it's a, it's a basic setup. Then I've created a, mu a menu item to show my, uh, my items in the front end. That's a, a, a simple uh, category block which shows all the items in the for sale category. And I've also set up a menu item for the edit cars option so in which I can present the form. Now let me show you how that is set up. Um, I've created a menu option called article manager which is the form to content article manager and in, within the options I've set what content type to display on the front end. I want to edit articles of the type car. Um, there are a few settings which might be interesting. Uh, I want to show a category filter. I want to show a search filter. I want to use the copy button. Um, I don't want to use archiving, so I can, I've can i set this off. But you see, it's very easy to hide or include buttons in your editing list. Um, now, let's see how this works in the front end. Here is the website on the front end. Uh, the card for sale category block is empty for now, so let's add, let's add a car. I have to log in first as an editor. And then I get the option edit cars. And then from the content presents for me the option to add new cars. Well, we're gonna create a new car. And here I see the form with the fields that I have defined for this car. As we are in Czechia here, there are a lot of Skoda, so let's enter a, a beautiful Skoda into the system. The category I want to put the article in is uh, the for sale category. If I've sold the car, then I can move it simply to the sold category. But for now, I'll put it in the for sale category. The brand is a Skoda, type Octavia 1.9 diesel, the registration ID, The transmission type, this is a, uh, a manual transmission. The fuel is diesel. The year is, uh, is, it's a car from 2001. It's a bit of an old car. It's got quite some mileage, 290,000 kilometers already, but the price is only 500 euros. I've written a simple description. Uh, I've used the ECE with a, with a different profile to, to, to strip all the fields that I don't need in the editor. And then I'm going to upload the, the images for my gallery. So I'm going to browse to my local file system. Select the first image. And from the content immediately presents the thumbnail that it's already defining. I can even enter an alt text or a title, but I'm not going to use it right now. And then the second image. Sorry? Yeah, I'm using, I'm uploading three images now. And no, no, just one, you can select one at a time. Okay, so I've got three images, save and close. And then the content is stored inside the form to content database. And if I look at cars for sale now, and I've got one car available, and what you see here is the, the default template that form to content generates. Well, about these templates that I can use to, to modify my layout. The default intro template is for the intro text, and the default main template is for the main text. So uh, that's a great tool to find all the fields that form to content created in the template. And templates are stored in the media com form to content templates folder. And there is a really handy template cheat sheet available, which gives you all the options that you can use uh, within your templates. For example, you, if you want to use the Joomla ID of the article, or an article link, or the section ID, category. Section ID is, of course, from Joomla 1.5. Uh, the published dates, uh, the created dates, um, all fields that Joomla uses are available within your template, and the cheat sheet can be very handy uh, for that. Well, the default intro template uh, 
is automatically generated by form to content and uh, by using the fields that I have created, we can find here the, how the brand is displayed, uh, how the type is displayed, the registration ID, the transmission, the fuel, the year, and uh, this is what the template looks like, and this is what the article in the front end looks like, but this is not a nice layout. This is the layout that I want to use. I've, in, in the Netherlands, there is a car sales website, and well, this looks much more convenient. Uh, you see a nice title, an image, and then some information about the car, and a detail link to see more information about the car. And what I want to use is uh, some bootstrap code to mimic this template. So I'll first show you some template basics. Uh, the Joomla title will refer to the article title. Uh, the Joomla article link will present a link to the article. Joomla category ID, a category ID of the article. Um, there is some special code to be used in templates. Um, Smarty code uses the accolade sign uh, uh, to reference all the variables. So if you want to use the accolade sign in your own templates, for example, to insert a plugin into your article, you would have to use the LDLIM for the left delimiter and the RDLIM for the right delimiter brackets codes. Um, for select lists, you can use the field name and the field text. Uh, field name is the chosen value, and the field text is the value that was displayed by, to the user. Um, same goes with the image galleries. Um, just the field name gives you the path to the folder where the images are stored, but you can also use the absolute and the relative path, paths for these. Um, and for example, if you create an image, an image gallery and you want to refer to the first image of the gallery, you can use this code uh, with the zero in it to re reference the first image. And there's also a snippet available which allows you to generate a list of all the thumbnails of the gallery that you've created. And again, then it's handy to use the, the template cheat sheet. Well, for the intro template, um, I've written this part of, uh, of the code. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a bootstrap layout uh, to mimic the, the, the design that you've seen before. Um, on the left side, I will show uh, an, an image and I refer to the first image in the gallery. And on the right side, I'll show you information about the year and the price and the mileage. And uh, then I'll present a, a read more link to show you the details information. And the link that I've used here is the Joomla article link, because that's automatically generated by form to content. And the main template uh, shows some extra information about uh, the brand, the type, the fuel, and presents the, 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 the image gallery. Uh, this, is, this is how it look before. So to apply a new template to an article, I have to modify the content type because initially uh, from the content set the default templates for the article, but also all the items that you've entered before, you, you will need to uh, assign the new template to that article. Well, let's show you how I did that. Um, this is the content type again. You see here is the default intro template and the default main template. I will now assign my own templates to this article type. So I'll choose the, the JAP15 intro car template and the main car template. Save and close. So every new article that I will add now will use the new templates. But I also have to modify my existing uh, car that I've entered, the beautiful Skoda Octavia. That was created with the default intro template. I will assign the, my own intro and my own main template here, and then save and close. And then we can check the front end to see how that looks. This is much better. <coughs> this article is now using the new templates that I've assigned. I see the image on the left. Here I see the year and the mileage and the pricing. And if I go to view details, You'll see the full article with the brand, the type, the fuel, and the transmission. And here are my images that I've uploaded. And it's got uh, through the models pop-up, I can show a larger image. So this is beginning uh, to look something that I want to use. When you looked at the content, you saw there was a details button in it. And the details button is also shown when you see 
the full article view. It, that's not so convenient. So I want to remove that button. It's not needed in the full article view. And this can be fixed by adding a small CSS snippet to the uh, intro text article. I put some styling, uh, some CSS styling inside the article. And um, if Joomla, Joomla displays a full article, it, it automatically adds the class view article. And uh, uh, the read more button is uh, uh, within the class read more. So what I do then is um, write a left delimiter and a right delimiter, and then the CSS code display none. <coughs> This snippet is then ad added to the intro template, and what we then need to do is refresh the, refresh the articles. So let's modify uh, the template. Within form to content, I have a template manager, and I open up the intro template. And then I will add this CSS snippet, I'll copy it here, and insert that here. And save. Now I've modified the template, so all I need to now to do now is refresh all the articles <coughs> that use this template. So I go to the form to content article manager, select all articles, and then refresh. <coughs> if I then check the front end and click view details, then you see the button is gone. So that's exactly what I want. So, <clears throat> putting it all together, um, I've created a, a, <coughs> the same view with multiple cars. I added a database lookup for all the brands. Um, I, I added a form to content search plugin and also added uh, an edit article button plugin. <clears throat> this looks like this. Now I've got a view of more cars. So, this begins to look ex uh, more like a car sales website. This is just simply the category blog. And then I can view the details of a specific car. And all these images are uh, pop upable through the models uh, plugin. <clears throat> On the right side here, here, you see the uh, form to content search plugin. <clears throat> this allows you to search across your, all your data which is stored in, form, stored in form to content. For example, if you want to uh, find all cars with manual transmission, Form to content dynamically searches through your content and show results. Then you have all the cars with manual transition uh, transmission. You can zoom further and say, I want to see all cars which are diesel. Then I've only got three cars left. <coughs> and if I show re results, then I've got three cars with manual transmission and the diesel for the fuel. Now, how is this uh, set up? Uh, let me open up the back end. Within form to content, I have the form to content search component. <coughs> and I've created a search form called Find Your Car, which searches over my content. <coughs> and the fields that I want to search for are defined in the fields section, uh, which is looking for the brand and the transmission and the fuel. <coughs> the brand is now set up as a database lookup. So let's show you how that is uh, set up. The brand field is now a, a database lookup field. It's no text field anymore. <clears throat> and I've defined that as a, a simple SQL query, which selects the ID and the brand from a database table called car brands. Now, these are here in the database, which is a simple list of uh, <clears throat> car brands. So you can create a field that looks up data inside of another database table. Um, what I've also added is a, an, a handy option to edit the content. When I now log in <coughs> as an administrator, and I look at the cars, I now get the option, edit this car. And when I click that, I automatically go to the proper form to content form. So instead of using <coughs> an option to uh, modify the Joomla article, I need to modify the form to content data. So if I change this car now uh, to a, 
a gasoline car and save and close. And then check the Volvo again in the details. You can now see it's a um, gasoline fuel. So you can very easily add a button that directly edits the form to content uh, data. Final thoughts. Um, with form to content you can uh, accomplish very structured and consistent front-end article editing. You can modify a template and then very easily update all of your articles. So one change in the template and by refreshing all the articles it, it immediately updates all your Joomla content. There's one uh, downside to it. For the front end, you will need Moo tools. <coughs> Which means if you have a template that doesn't use Moo tools, you have to uh, make sure that for form to content, you still load Moo tools. Uh, and you can create templates for the forms as well. And combined with jQuery, you can create very powerful dynamic forms. And you've just seen the basics of uh, what you can do with form to content. Any questions? Well, if, if, if the articles are all from the same content type, then when you change the <coughs> template, you can automatically refresh all the articles that use that same template. Do you understand? So, within Form to Content, let me see if I can show it to you. You have to go to the back end and select them. Yeah. <coughs> um, when I go into the template manager, and for example, uh, I open up the, uh, the intro template of the car, uh, and... Uh, oh, I understand. The fields in the article. You, you, you mean the Joomla article, or...? Uh, if you change the, the templates, you add the cars and then you change the car template, and then you have to go back and update all the cars. This is one article, and then? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, you first, when you click the, the first project for the top of the video, yeah. uh, you have to uh, then change uh, the template. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Ah, now I understand. Um, initially, Form to Content defines a default intro template and a default main template. Uh, later on, I created my own template. So, <coughs> within the Form to Content definition, then I, I've modified that you now have to use this other template, but all the articles that I already created, uh, Form to Content stored within the article data that it used the old template. So then I would have to manually update all these templates. Of each article yeah so therefore the best thing to do if you want to use your own template before adding the first article assign your own template and then all the articles get created with the, with the proper template and if you then modify the layout of the template then you only have to refresh all the articles and that can be do in a, in a one-click session uh, you simply go to uh, the, the article manager uh, here are all the cars. I, I select them all and refresh, and then all the Joomla articles are instantly refreshed with the new settings within the normal template. Okay? But you would have like 10,000 articles, and you're not able to select all of them. No, because within Joomla you can go to the. Uh, you, 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 you could display all, but with 10,000 articles. That I mean, there's no bulk or batch. There's a batch button, but maybe that doesn't do. No, no. I must, I must admit, I haven't used that option. Um, what you can set uh, within the content, content type manager, you can set it to use... Uh, there's a language option. So you can, I assume, you can save, <coughs> for example, English data, and then later on, German or Dutch or whatever, uh, uh, depending on the English, on the languages which are available. But I must admit, I, I've never used from the content within a multiple lingual environment. Any other questions? 
is there any support if you have this intro and the main template? Yeah. In case you want to have an intro and then go to the detailed Ajax fashion, just without refreshing the entire page like in place. Have you ever done that kind of integration with a no, what, what Form to Conflict basically does is it just stores your data inside a basic Joomla article, a standard Joomla article. So it's just basically an article view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th that's, that's also the danger about it because uh, if the, the front end editor also has uh, back end access, he might change the generated Joomla article. And then later on, if the, on the front end, you would change the data, it would simply overwrite the Joomla article again. Uh, you can overcome this by uh, setting the proper ACL settings to disallow you to not go to these articles in the back end. You can still create articles through front to content in the front end. So but if, you, like, if you enable front end editing, then the person would still change the yeah. actual article. Yeah. That's why in this example I have uh, disabled front-end editing by just removing the edit button and, so, and, and inserted the form to content edit button. Uh, the, the sites that we've built for our clients, uh, we make sure that the content editors are not Joomla editors. They are just registered users that can provide content through form to content. As soon as they are a publisher or an author, uh, then they would have front-end editing capabilities. Which, which can be dangerous. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Then um, the slides are already available on SlideShare. Uh, and as a remembrance, here's the, the coupon code. Thank you very much.